Yeah, so I'll show it to you on in. So this is a typical example of a yield curve. So it has period of maturity and the interest rates. It has period of maturity of bond versus mm -hmm. interest rates. So it means the longer period bonds have higher interest rates than the shorter period bonds. So if it's a 30 year bond, it will have higher interest rate than a six months bond. That is what a yield curve or a term structure means. So these theories suggest why the shape of yield curve is the way it is. Now yield curve can be positive sloping that is upward sloping. It can be downward sloping that is negative sloping or it can be flat positive downward and flat. So based on the shape of the yield curve, there are three theories. So one is expectation theory. The expectation theory says that the yield curve is an indication of future interest rates. So if the yield curve is positive sloping, that is upward sloping, interest rates are going to rise in future. If, in, if the yield curve is flat, it means the interest rates are going to stay same. And if the yield curve is downward sloping, it means the interest rates are going to fall. Liquidity preference means yield, the shape of yield curve, the upward positive shape of yield curve indicates that there is less liquidity in a 30 year bond versus a six months bond. So it says first point shorter term bonds have more liquidity. So for convincing investors to lock their money for longer durations, the long term bonds has to pay more. So liquidity preference theory suggests that we have to pay more in long term bonds to induce investors to invest there. That's the reason interest rates on long term bonds are higher than the short term bonds. The limitation of liquidity preference theory is that it doesn't explain flat curves as well as downward sloping curves. Market segmentation means the interest rates that you see on the yield curve is a function of demand and supply. So if demand is more, the interest rate go up. If supply is more, the interest rate go down. Second point it suggests there are two different markets in terms of yield in terms of bonds two different players in terms of bonds so banks are majorly investors in short term market and pension funds are major investors pension funds and mutual funds are major investors in long term market long term bond market so the yield curve indicates the supply and demand of banking and it indicates supply and demand of pension funds Then there are two sides to a fixed income trading house, the sell side and the buy side. So the sell side is the investment dealer side. So firms divide fixed income duties into three roles, investment bankers, traders and sales representative. So sell side means they help to sell companies fixed income. So if I'm a company, I'm issuing fixed income, I'll contact a sell side firm to sell my offerings. So they help the issuer. Buy side is the retail and institutional client side. So they help the buyer. Most buy side institutional firms are divided into portfolio managers and traders. So investment bankers, traders and sales representative can be sell side. Portfolio managers and traders can be buy side. Traders are there both sides because traders help buyers also. They help sellers also. Settlement cycle, T-bills are settled in the same day and all other bonds, Government of Canada bonds are settled in T plus two days. So trading, buying bonds through an investment dealer. So you can buy, you can trade in firms with large institutional dealing desk. You can trade in firms without large institutional trading desk. Then there are inter-dealer brokers and there are non-electronic trades. So what is the advantage of trading in firms with institutional dealing desk? Will Visa is not trading in firm with institutional dealing desk? 
so institutional dealing desk means these firms have inventory so they can furnish the demand of bond from their own inventory so it is better to deal with firms that have institutional dealing desk then interdealer brokers are brokers that help dealers communicate with each other or trade with each other non electronic trade is when you trade on phone so the all the phone calls are recorded so even if you trade bonds on phone you are liable to execute the deal so they are treated as valid contracts so whenever you trade you will get a trade ticket so trade ticket is the confirmation of order it means specification of counterparties identification of bond so bond number so bonds committee on uniform security identification process so this number nominal par and face value price and yield is mentioned settlement date is mentioned accrued interest will accrued interest will discuss it in a while but that is mentioned and the custodian is mentioned so all these details are mentioned clearing and settlements for the bonds so there are three types of bonds bearer bonds so they do not bear any name of investor whoever holds it gets the rights to coupon register bonds are held with the name of the investor so it is little safer than the bearer bonds both these are not traded much because most of the bonds are traded in book format now so book format means they are traded in electronic format now this is important accrued interest is let's say bond is a semi annual bond and every 6 months it pays interest or coupons now i have hold the bond i have held the bond for 6 months i have held the bond for let's say 5 months out of 6 and i am expecting to get the coupon after 1 month but i sell the bond now the new buyer who is buying the bond from me gets the entire coupon for 6 months though he is only going to held the bond for 1 month because five months i was having that bond so that is unfair to me so what happens is in this case the buyer will pay the seller accrued interest or accrued interest it means it will pay interest worth five months so he only gets interest or the coupon worth one month to be fair to me because i was having the bond for five months though i did not get any interest the new bond holder gets it the interest for entire 6 months so he will pay back 5 months worth of interest and you pay it when you buy the bond so this is an example they have given in the textbook so you purchase a 8% government of canada bond which is due to mature on march 15 2025 the principal is 200000 you purchase the bond on 7th of may the last coupon was paid in march so the pers- you have to pay back dif- the coupon from march to may march 16th is therefore the first day of accrued interest the one day after bond the last payment date the settlement date is 9th of may the number of days in the transactions are as follows so number of days will be one day after the coupon is paid to the settlement date settlement date is may 9th so 16 to 31 16 days 30 days and 9 days so you have to pay him back face value multiplied by the coupon rate divided by 100 into the par into the number of days that is 55 divided by 365 so you have to pay him 2410 dollars when you buy the bond last part the bond index funds can be uh, used as a bond index funds are similar to what we have in stock market so we have sap 500 the dow jones so you have bond indexes so bond indexes can be used to gauge the performance of overall bond market as a performance measurement tool and to construct bond index funds so example futsi tmx canada universe bond index fund is an example now the important thing in this chapter i'm just going to summarize it in a brief discussion so things that you have to remember 
सो बॉन्ड प्राइजेस आर इनवर्सली रिलेटेड टू यील्ड्स वाई टी एम राइट इट मीन्स इफ वाई टी एम इंक्रीजेस बॉन्ड प्राइजेस फॉल एंड इफ वाई टी एम फॉल्स बॉन्ड प्राइजेस इंक्रीज दिस इज द फर्स्ट थिंग यू हैव टू रिमेंबर नेक्स्ट इज सेंसिटिविटी ऑफ बॉन्ड्स ओके सो यू हैव मैच्योरिटी यू हैव कूपॉन्स एंड यू हैव ड्यूरेशन सो सेंसिटिविटी is high when the maturity is long when the coupon rates are low so lower the coupon higher is the sensitivity and when duration is high sensitivity is low when maturity is short coupon rates are high and duration is low so what do you do when interest rate fall when interest rate falls you will buy when interest rate falls the bond prices go up inverse relation so when interest rate falls you want to make the most amount of money so you will buy a long maturity bond a low coupon bond and a high duration bond when interest rates rise the bond is going to fall in value so you are going to buy you are going to reduce your risk by buying a short term bond by buying a high coupon bond and buying a low duration bond so this chart is important okay do remember it and the next concept was accrued interest or accrued interest it is the amount the buyer pays to seller to compensate for the lost coupon it is calculation important things always calculate number of days from one day after the last coupon to the settlement date so if settlement date is not given it is 2 days after the buying date okay these two things are important so thank you see you in the next recording